Welcome along to part two of our video tutorial where we are creating a trading card for a famous netballer. As you see on the screen right now, this is where we left off in the first video. What we need to do in this second part of the video now is just put the final touches on by completing this banner down the bottom and just slightly moving things around until we're happy with the look of our card. Okay, so to get started on this next section, we need to be in Photo P and we're going to draw a white banner that goes across the bottom section of the page here using our rectangle tool. This is our rectangle tool down here towards the bottom of your toolbox. At the top of the page, I need you to change the fill color to something close to white. It doesn't have to be spot on white, but I'm going to click on a color in the ball here, which is pretty close to white. So I might need to click this color picker box first and select something up there. Click OK when we're good to go. And with that rectangle tool still selected, click and drag from one side of the trading card to the other. And create yourself a strip about that big. Okay, not too big, not too small. Now what we want to do with this strip is you want to use a gradient to color it. We're actually going to have a transparent color here on the left that fades into this kind of whitish color on the right. So how do we do that? Well, we've got to get a bit fancy. Over in your layers panel, first of all, double click on shape one and give it the name banner. Okay, this is the banner that goes at the bottom of the page. Once you've renamed it to banner, Keep it selected and go down the bottom of your page where you can see these little tools floating around down here. I want you to add a raster mask by pressing this rectangle with a circle in the middle of it. When you press that, not much happens apart from this little white box here appearing. You need to make sure that you have clicked on that box right there. And that's going to allow us to do this gradient effect we're about to do over here. So what I want you to do now is go and pick up your gradient tool from your toolbox that we used not long ago to do the background. And up the top here where you've got this little arrow, select this third option across the black and the white. When we draw this gradient, what's going to happen because we put this raster mask on it, basically the black sections of this gradient will disappear and become invisible, whereas the white sections will stay completely visible. So watch this as I draw from one side to the other with a straight line. See, this half fades out and it slowly fades in to this white. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm happy with how that strip is for now. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my layers and where I've got the lightning logo hidden at the moment, I'm going to press this little eyeball to make it come back. Now we're going to hold shift and drag in from one of the corners to resize this logo so it fits inside the banner on the right hand side. Okay, now as I move it down to the banner, you can see it goes behind the banner. So hopefully you know now to pick up this layer and drag it above everything else so that it appears on top. Okay, so that looks pretty good where it is over there. Next thing we might do is write this chick's name. So grab your type tool and we're going to write Steph Wood in capital letters. So just click your text anywhere. Now the color we want is that gold color that we've been using before from the logo. So I'm going to change the color quickly up here to that gold. And in capital letters, I'm writing Steph Wood. Now I want to change my font. Okay, so up the top while I've got this highlighted. I found one a bit before that I liked, the Bebaz Sky. I'm going to select that one. I'm going to up its size to, oh, let's say, about 100-ish, bit over 100 pixels. And I'm going to move it down into this section. Now, that's a little bit too big still. So, for my liking, I think I'm going to have to drop below 100. Actually, now about 100 pixels looks good. So, I'm going to move that just over there. Now, it's a pretty plain-looking font. So, what we're going to do is we're going to jazz it up a bit like what we did with the sharpshooters at the top. So... Let's go over to our layers here and look for the Steph Wood layer and double click on this empty space here to bring up our layer style box. Okay, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to add a stroke to it, which is a border. So there it is just there. Now the border we want to add is that purple color. So if we click on this, just make sure it is the purple that we see in the lightning logo. It's going to be a little bit hard to click on. 
text one a bit better. Maybe a pink, purple in a shirt. That looks pretty good. But I'm just using the purple colour from her dress. Uh, so I'll click OK on that. Now the stroke could probably be a wee bit thicker. Let me have a look. Size 5, maybe size 4 for the pixels. And the position there, outside, I think. Yeah, it looks better than the inside. So let's leave it as outside. Uh, click on OK. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a second stroke on that. So remember, over here in our layers, right click on that one, convert it to a smart object. That's going to allow us to add a second stroke or border onto this text. So now we can double click our mouse in this empty gap, add another stroke. We're going to leave it as that purple colour. And we're just going to whack the size down a bit, probably to one pixel I'd say. Um, another thing we could do is add a drop shadow to it. It's going to add a bit of a shadow behind the text. Um, that size is probably a little bit big. Oops. So just play around with these settings here until you get something you like the looks of. So I don't know if I want to go up or down here. Oops. That doesn't look too bad. So I'll click OK on that. So it's got a very slight shadow in there as well. All right, so I think her name is looking pretty good. The last thing I want to put in over here is what we call a QR code. And to make one of them, I'm just going to go over to qrstuff.com. What I want to do is when people hover their phone over this QR code, it's going to take them to a website all about Steph Wood and give you information about her. So I'm going to click on a website URL option here. I found this website a little bit earlier. It's the official Sunny Coast Lightning page that has um, a good little bio about her. Okay, so we're going to use that as our link. So back on QR stuff, we just put that in as the website URL. And over here is our little QR code ready to go. So if we scan that with our phones, uh, that would take us off to this page right here. So I'm going to right click on that. You can save the image if you want. I'm just going to copy it in this case. Head back to Photo P and go to Edit Paste. And in it comes. Comes out a little bit big. So you're going to have to hold Shift and drag in from a corner just to give it a resize. Should be just a little bit bigger in height than that strip behind it. It should fill up the space here on the left hand side pretty nicely. I might put a drop shadow effect on this. So over in your layers panel where it's got layer 1, double click on it and call it QR code. And then double click in this empty space next to QR code. Now all we need to do is go to drop shadow. It's going to have the same settings as what we just used before. If you want to turn them up a little bit, you probably could and get away with it. Not too bad, so I'll click on OK. And now we've got a little shadow behind that as well, even though it's a little bit tricky to see. But that's basically the bottom section um, all done. So what I'm going to do now is just finishing touches to make it look a little bit nicer. If you want to go and resize some stuff, move it around a little bit. I'm just going to stretch this text out a little bit to make it look a bit nicer. Uh, that's all good. I can probably make this a little bit bigger, this photo. Grab sharpshooters and give it a bit of a move. I might leave it like that because it's going to waste time otherwise. So that's basically how you can create yourself a trading card using PhotoP. To save your work, there's two ways you can save it. If you want to come back to it and have access to all these different layers here, you just go to File and Save as PSD. However, if you are finished and you're ready to submit this for marking, I want you to go to Export As and, and choose JPEG. Quality, um, I'm going to set it to 100%. As you can see, it's only half a megabyte in size. It's a small file. Remember, business cards fit in the palm of your hand, so it's not looking for a great amount of detail when we save it. So 100% is good for the quality. Click on Save. And that will save down into your accounts. Okay, so I'm going to stop now. That is basically how you create yourself a trading card 
using Photopea.